Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So uh, yesterday I did the uh, the the cable. I made a RF aerial cable uh, with some alligator clips so I can use it for my radio projects. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of radio. I, I, I'm trying to stay mostly in digital land, but inevitably there's some RF things to do. So uh, I'll just do them and and uh, and that'll be that'll be fun. Today's uh, Silly job title is Master Planner. I'm the Master Planner. And today's old book review, or old book teardown, in a teardown, um, this old book called uh, Frequency Modulation by A.W. Keane. So uh, I'll throw you over the bench and let's have a look at what's in this thing. Here we are on the bench, and here's our book. Now, what have we got? So uh, it's a uh, hard, hard covered, and its dust jacket is missing. Uh, it's got a stamp in the front. It says Technical Book and Magazine Co. Swanson Street, Melbourne. So this has come from Australia. Forty-seven slash three. I don't know what that means. It might be a price. I don't know. Frequency modulation. And then uh, there's a there's a photo. Isn't that interesting? I don't think there's any other photos in this book. No, it's on a, it's on like a, a sheen glossy paper. This is the um, VHF aerial at Rotham, courtesy of the BBC. Frequency modulation: an introduction to the fundamental principles by A. W. Keane, M. I. R. E. A. M. I. E. E. Senior Lecturer in Electronics and Telecommunications, Coventry Technically Technical College, formerly of EMI Research Laboratories Limited. Published in London by Sir Isaac Pittman and Sons. First published in 1958. And uh, printed in Great Britain by the Camelot House, the Camelot Press Limited, London and Southampton. Then there's a preface. Let's read the preface. <clears throat> Hitherto, frequency modulated radio waves, FM, have been of little more than academic interest to most electronic engineers and technicians in this country. But the introduction <clears throat> by the BBC of FM broadcasting at very high frequencies, VHF, has made this technique one of practical concern to the large number of engineers and technicians who are already being called upon to design, install, test and service the transmitting and receiving equipment. While there exists an extensive literature on FM technique, this is almost entirely of an advanced nature and is so highly mathematical as to be intelligible only to experienced professional engineers. The few serious books available are nearly all American and were written some years ago when interest in FM, due to its novelty, was at its peak. At the other extreme, there have, from time to time, been popular expositions of the subject, most of which have been too superficial and inaccurate to be of any value. The object of the present book is to provide those who are seriously interested in the technicalities of the subject a concise but comprehensive descriptive account of both the transmitting and receiving sides of FM broadcasting technique. The mathematical aspects have been almost entirely suppressed in order to make the text more readable, as is desirable in an introduction to any highly technical subject. As a result of this restriction, the treatment of the interference and distortion aspects in Chapter 4 may appear to be unduly superficial, but this result is inevitable. Readers are assumed to be thoroughly familiar with AM technique. This assumption is reasonable insofar as the greater complexity of FM makes some prior experience of AM essential, and it has the advantage of allowing a more compact treatment. Despite the small size of the book, there are believed to be no major and very few minor technical tricks which are not mentioned in the text. Some of the devices, such as the ph Phasitron tube and the free modine receiver, which do not appear to have survived, have been included because they represent notable milestones of progress and are of great technical interest. 
A.W. Keane, February 1956. There you go. <clears throat> now, here we are. The table of contents. The preface we've read. Symbols and abbreviations. So those are coming up. Chapter 1. The frequency modulated signal. The audio signal. The radio carrier. The sine wave. Electrical sine waves. Amplitude modulation, AM. Relationship between frequency and phase. Phase modulation, PM. Frequency modulation, FM. FM and PM spectra. Bessel plots. Combined FM and PM. Chapter 2. Generation of frequency modulated signals. Armstrong's method. The pre-distorter or inverse frequency network. A dual channel Armstrong phase modulator. Differential phase modulators. The serosoid phase modulator. Reactance valve frequency modulators. Push pull reactance frequency modulators. Reactance value phase modulators. Frequency modulated phase shift oscillators. Reactance modulation of crystal oscillators. The magnetic frequency modulator. Cathode ray tube phase modulators. The Fazitron tube. Frequency modulated colostrons. Chapter 3. Detection of frequency modulated signals. Amplitude detectors. The slope FM detector. The double tuned circuit frequency discriminator. The phase discriminator circuit. Foster Seeley discriminators. Amplitude limiters, the radio detector, locked oscillator limiters and detectors, super regenerative de detectors and limiters, gated beam tube limiters, quadrature grid detectors, pulse discriminators. Chapter 4 Interference and Distortion in FM Reception Armstrong's Introduction of Wideband FM Single frequency interference, modulated interference, impulsive interference, random noise interference, pre emphasis and de emphasis, distortion in FM. Chapter 5 Frequency modulation transmitting equipment. Comparison of modulation methods. Frequency multipliers. Armstrong's transmitter. Developments of Armstrong's transmitter, FM speech transmitters, direct FM transmitters, electronic center frequency stabilization by AFC, electronic center frequency stabilization, stabilization by APC, electromechanical center frequency stabilization, frequency dividers, transmitter monitoring equipment, Propagation and polarization. The turnstile and super turnstile. Circular square and cloverleaf dipole loops. Circular folded dipole loops. Slotted cylinders, the pylon. Vertical stacking feed systems. Chapter 6 Frequency modulation receiving equipment. Essential features of FN reception. Choice between straight and superhet. Use of super generation. Sorry, use of super regeneration. Combination of AM FM receivers. FM communications receivers. Frequency compression receivers. Frequency division in IF amplifiers. VHF amplifiers. VHF frequency changes. IF amplification amplification in combination receivers, combined AM-FM detectors, FM signal generators, alignment procedure, receiving aerials. Appendix 1. The mathematics of frequency modulation. Modulated waves, amplitude modulation, phase modulation, frequency modulation. Bessel expansion of PM and FM waves. Superposition of two unmodulated signals. Transfer characteristics of simple networks. 
balanced differential phase modulator, Armstrong's phase modulator, frequency modulation due to anti-symmetrical side frequency pair, the reactance valve, quadrature phase shift produced by a tune transformer, the phase discriminator, comparative noise performance of AM and FM receivers, appendix 2, selected references, general, generation of FM, detection of FM, interference and distortion aspects, transmitting equipment, receiving equipment. And then there's an index on page 271. List of plates. Oh, that's interesting. So there's others in the, in the book here somewhere. There they are. Okay, cool. Well, we'll have a look at those when we get to them. The list of plates. So we saw the one on the front, the VHF aerial at Rotham. And then there's a couple later on. So there's the VHF aerial at Rotham inside the mast, front view of STC SF1 exciter, and the rear view of the STT CF1 exciter, and then the final and penultimate stages of STC CF4, and then FM AM ganged variable tuning capacitor, and typical FM AM receiver chassis, top view, typical FM AM receiver chassis, bottom view, and the Marconi FM AM signal generator type TF995A slash 2. I'm not sure if it's Marconi or Marsoni. I should, I should know. This guy was uh, famous uh, in radio. Alright, so we've got some symbols and abbreviations. And then we're into chapter 1. So let's read the first paragraph in chapter 1. The frequency modulated signal. In order to understand clearly the action of frequency modulation, FM, equipment, it is necessary to appreciate the nature of the FM signal itself. It is not essential to have recourse to advanced mathematics, such as Bessel functions, which are generally employed in engineering literature, provided one is familiar with the vectoral treatment of AC theory usually adopted in elementary radio courses. Using vector diagrams, one can, contain, uh, can obtain a picture of the FM signal and it is instructive to compare this with corresponding illustrations of other types of radio signal, particularly the amplitude modulation, AM, signal, which, until recently, has been employed exclusively for sound broadcasting by radio in this country. In case the reader is unacquainted with vectors, it is proposed to begin by showing him they may be used to illustrate amplitude modulation with which process the reader will be supposed to be familiar. There we go. Then we're on to the audio signal, the radio carrier. Alright, and this shows how a rotating vector or phaser um, generates a, a sine wave. Okay. And then here's some different types of sine waves. Okay. Electrical sine waves. There we go. A sinusoidal modulating wave and carriers modulated by A in amplitude, B in phase, and C in frequency. Fascinating. There we go. More diagrams. Relationship between frequency and phase, phase modulation, more stuff. Vector diagram of single tone frequency and phase modulation with graph showing the dependence of angular deviation on modulating signal amplitude and frequency. Frequency modulation FM. When a carrier is phase modulated by a perfect sine wave, A, its frequency changes as at B. This is the limiting case of trapezoidal modulation shown dashed which produces square pulse variations of frequency. Frequency modulation by a square wave produces triangular changes of phase as at D. Interesting. FM and PM spectra. Bessel plots. Interesting. Relative amplitudes of the carrier and the first three side frequency pairs of an FM signal for values of modulation index up to 10. Hmm. 
All right. Armstrong's method of generating FM. We've got a crystal oscillator and a pre-distorter network which accepts the audio input and then it forces that all into a balanced amplitude modulator, 90 degrees phase shift network, additive mixer, R FM RF output. There we go. This is all uh, being put together with tubes by the looks of it. Okay, no transistors there. Uh, suppressed carrier single tone amplitude modulated wave. Okay. Amplitude modulation is not hard to get your head around. Frequency modulation, I still don't understand. I'll have to read this book. Although maybe it, it would be better to start with something that uses transistors instead of vacuum tubes. There's a guy called Armstrong invented a, a way of generating FM. Typical oscillator reactance valve combination. Three methods of modulating a reactance valve. Shunt open to grid, series input to grid, cathode input. Wow. Push pull. So, uh, okay. I was expecting uh, FM to be mostly about like mathematics and, and how uh, the actual signal was modeled and stuff, but this book is all in on how to make circuits. Fascinating. Lots of circuit diagrams. Um, isn't there? Heaps of them. And they're all using vacuum tubes. So this is uh, an interesting book. Uh, it's not what I thought it would be. I thought it would just be a whole lot of maths and explanation about RF. Uh, yeah, RF waves. But it's mostly about uh, circuits so far, isn't it? Look at that. Look at all these circuits. From the point of view of FM, <coughs> this form of response, this is the slope FM detector. From the point of view of FM, this form of response is of fundamental importance because it contains the essential feature of an FM detector, namely an output amplitude which varies with the frequency of the input signal. Here we are, we've arrived at our plates. I was looking forward to these. Can you see those? Yeah, you can see those. All right, so this is, um, uh, this is the inside the uh, aerial at Rotham. Wow. Uh, inside the cylindrical section of the mast. So, isn't that fascinating? Wow. I tell you, I don't understand aerials. They just sort of pick electromagnetic energy out of the air somehow. And it's related to their structure, their effectiveness at doing that. I mean, I really just don't get it. Electromagnetism. Just don't understand it at all. This is the front view of the STC CF1 exciter. And there's a bunch of labels. The frequency multiplier. The frequency comparator, the frequency divider, the crystal oscillator, the modulated oscillator, the audio amplifier, the meter panel, the control panel, and the final tripler. Isn't that an amazing piece of technology? So that's the front of it, and this is the back of it. The same thing, the STC F CF1 exciter. Uh, and the credits are to standard telephones and cables. Must have been some British company that took these photos. So on the back we've got supply unit, 50 volts and oven. Uh, supply unit fills, supply unit 250, 300 volt. Supply unit 250, 300 volt. Supply unit 320 volt. Supply unit 400 volt. Relay care of unit A and relay care of unit B and then input panel uh, voltage regulate uh, re voltage regulation control voltage regulation control uh, DCQL unit or DCOL maybe online 
DC unit and AC unit. Wow. And then we've got one more photo over here. This is called the final and penultimate stages of STC CF4. Wow. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Look like big vacuum tubes, don't they? Couldn't even begin to guess at how that works. Awesome. Amplitude limiters. More circuits with valves in them. There's heaps of circuits in this book. I was not expecting that at all. I'm not going to really be able to understand this because it's all using stuff that, that we don't use anymore. Don't use it at all. The radio detector. Locked oscillator limiters and detectors. All right, we've got application of automatic phase control to an IF dividing locked oscillator as described by GL Beers, courtesy of PROC IRE. Now, why don't I know what IF stands for? Is it, uh, I don't know, some sort of frequency? I wonder if there's an index. Uh. Instantaneous frequency. Oh, and there's intermediate frequency. IF. Intermediate frequency. Intermediate frequency. Okay. This is a frequency divider. Wow. What were we reading? I'm not sure. <sighs> All right. On we go. Tube limiters. Wow. Pulse discriminators. Of all the demodulators described so far, require accurate tuning to obtain the correct discriminator characteristic, it being particularly important that the crossover point be correctly located and stable. One method of, of avoiding alignment troubles is to limit the FM signal as when using an amplitude sensitive phase or frequency discriminator type of demodulator and make use of the variations of the squared off wave so obtained. Interference and distortion in FM reception. Armstrong's introduction of wideband FM. This Armstrong seems to have made some contributions, doesn't he? Single frequency interference. Modulated interference. Impulsive interference. Random noise interference. The name noise is generally applied to any spurious signal other than the desired signal which enters or arises within a receiver and produces an audible output, either as a result of its own fluctuations or through interaction with the desired or other undesired signals. Many such noises, such as crackles caused by bad internal contacts, may be eliminated by modification of the receiver. Others, such as interference conducted by the power main supply, may be filtered out. There are, however, certain forms of noise which are inherent in the nature of electrical systems and cannot be eliminated, although they may be minimized by a suitable circuit design. The most important of these are thermal agitation noise, which is produced by all electrical conductors, and shot noise, which occurs in valves. There you go. Pre-emphasis and de-emphasis. Look at this, we've got pre-emphasis networks, and one of them is a RC network, and the other one's a, an RL network, where C is the capacitor and L is the inductor. Okay. There you go. 
pre-emphasis networks. It will be clear from the triangular shape of the FM receiver noise characteristic that the most offensive component of the audible noise output of the receiver will be those of the highest audio frequency. In most program material, only a small portion of the total signal energy occurs in the upper part of the audio frequency spectrum. Accordingly, it is standard practice to counter this situation by boosting the high notes of the transmitter. This process is called pre-emphasis. It is <clears throat> not peculiar to FM transmission and is sometimes employed with other me methods of modulation. In order to preserve correct tonal balance, it is, of course, essential to modify the frequency response of the receiver in an inverse manner that is to make the audio frequency response full with increase of frequency, thereby reducing the effects of high audio frequency noise as required. This inverse process is called de-emphasis. There you go. So uh, the, uh, the pre-emphasis networks are done in this way and the de-emphasis networks are done in this way. And there's a bit of symmetry there, isn't there? Interesting. Ah, so we've got uh, frequency multipliers. More circuits with vacuum tubes in them. Armstrong's transmitter. Good work, Armstrong. Maybe we should make some notes about Armstrong. Let's learn a bit about Armstrong. See if I can find something about who this guy is. <sighs> My pen's been playing up. Give me. Give me a second, I'll fix my pen. And when I say pen, I really mean pencil. It's a mechanical pencil. And I've got uh, I've got some replacement uh, lead here. I'm using 0.7 uh, mil uh, 2B uh, LED from Pentel. Uh, and I believe I can just pop out the eraser and then chuck a few of these in there and then we can consider it reloaded so I'll just put the eraser back on close the lid back up and we're good to buy some more of that soon so uh, in addition to Armstrong was there anything else we wanted to look up I don't think so alright Developments of Armstrong's transmitter. Okay, FM speech transmitters, direct FM transmitters, electronic center frequency stabilis stabilization by AFC. You know what AFC stands for? Did they mention that earlier? Ah, not sure. Electronic center frequency stabilization by APC. Electromechanical center frequency stabilization. <sighs> frequency dividers. Mentioned to RCA. RCA. So, um, some sort of radio corporation, maybe. RCA. Was it maybe of America? I'm not sure. But I know that we have RCA cables. And they've been around for a long time. Here we go. This is a ganged variable tuning capacitor. Look at that. You know, they still make tuning capacitors in much the same fashion, I believe. This uh, photo was credited to Jackson Brothers, L London. Plate 5, FM AM ganged variable tuning capacitor. And we've got some more. Can you see that? So the uh, the top one is typical FM AM receiver chassis top view. All right. So there's a tuning drive spindle, a pointer, wave band switches, ferret rod aerial for AM stations, tuning scale, AM FM detection, and AF 
amplifier valve, output valve, power transformer, electrolytic smoothing capacitor, power cable, second pair of IF transformers, IF amplifier valve, first pair of IF transformers, VHF coils, VHF amplifier and frequency changer valve, AM FM ganged tuning capacitor. Absolutely fascinating. And then we've got plate 7, the typical FM AM receiver chassis, bottom view. So that was the top and this is the bottom. So what have we got? We've got uh, uh, output valve base. Uh, look, it's a real mess of components in there. They, they didn't even use a circuit board. They just wired everything together. It's a, it's a mess. Okay, the output valve base, detection slash AF amp valve base, coaxial cable connection from second FM IF transformer to WC switch, wave band switches, wave band switch spindle, VHF front end circuit components, FM aerial feeder socket, VHF valve amplifier and FC base, VHF coil tuning slugs, uh, FC IF valve base, AM IF transformers, IF amplifier valve base, FM IF, IF transformers, electrolytic capacitor and a volume control and on off switch. Wow, that's amazing. And one last photo. Uh, this is the Marconi FM AM signal generator type TF995A slash 2. Wow. Huh. Something about old technology that's sort of, I don't know, high tech. <laughs> Propagation and polarization. The turnstile and super turnstile. Circular square and clover leaf dipole loops. Wow. Uh, circular folded dipole loops. Vertical stacking feed systems. Okay, now we're into receiving equipment. <clears throat> ah, so the basic differences between AM at the top and FM at the bottom. So an AM receiver has the aerial, comes into a narrow band carrier frequency circuits, AM detector, and then modulation frequency circuits, and then out comes the sound. And then for the FM, uh, wideband carrier frequency circuits, amplitude limiter, FM detector, de-emphasis network, modulation frequency circuits. Now, wasn't that interesting about the emphasis and the de-emphasis? So you need to have the de-emphasis in the FM receiver because in the FM transmitter, I guess by convention, is a pre-emphasis. So since that's in the signal, you have to take it out at the other end. Uh, and it was good. Um, I think they emphasize high pitch. I don't know. And then they de-emphasize high pitch. I didn't quite uh, get that exactly right in my head. Super regeneration. Much attention was devoted in America to the use of super regeneration in the earlier years of receiver development when the limiter phase discriminator combination was the standard method of demodulation but with the introduction of the radio detector which provided a relatively simple solution of the limiting detection problem interest in super regeneration diminished. Since World War II, super regeneration has been revived by the widespread adoption in Western Germany of FM adopters consisting of a super regenerative amplifier limiter detector preceded by a buffer amplifier stage. These two value adapters are designed to feed the gramophone pickup terminals of conventional AM receivers. The Fremodyne super regenerative receiver he mentioned in the um, in the preface that the the fremodyne is uh, obsolete. Even back then, it was obsolete. But he said it constituted an, an important step along the way. We might as well make a note, huh? So let's uh, let's make some notes about. I don't understand what's wrong with this pencil. It's 
it's not working properly. <sighs> Excuse me for a second, I'll find a new pencil. Alright, I'm back. and I got a new pencil. So I was just making a note here about... Uh, why isn't this working? Fram... O... Dine. So I'll, uh, I'll put some notes about the Fremadine in the uh, in the show notes for this uh, for this this book. Okay, combination AM FM receivers. Looks like you can. Oh yeah, there you go. You can uh, you can use bits of them in common. FM communication receivers, frequency compression receivers, frequency division in IF amplifiers. <sighs> VHF amplifiers, a little bit of mathematics here, and uh, some transformer, VHF frequency changes, circuits everywhere, this guy has got so many circuits, fascinating, amplification in combination receivers, Combined AFM, AM, FM detectors. Look at that. I have no idea what that is. That must be some sophisticated. It's an EABC80 or 6AK8. Some specialist sort of vacuum tube. <sighs> FM signal generators. Alignment procedure. Scheme employed for visual FM receiver alignment. Talking about TV. Receiving aerials. Oh, there you go. Chimney mounting. Chimney mounting. Isn't that quaint? I suppose there's still chimneys, but not as common as they used to be. Appendix 1. The mathematics of frequency modulation. There we go. Vessel expansion of PM and FM waves. Wow. Superposition of two unmodulated signals. Yeah. Fascinating. When a compensated frequency dependent network of constant resistance is needed, the same method is adopted and the additional branch connected in parallel with the input terminals. Balanced differential phase modulator, Armstrong's phase modulator, frequency modulation due to anti-symmetrical side frequency pairs, the reactance valve, Quadrature phase shift produced by a tuned transformer. Phase discriminator. Comparative noise performance of AM and FM receivers. Looks like they've got some mathical, mathematical way to actually express noise. Wow. Taking the ratio of the results obtained with the two methods of modulation so as that the output of the FM receiver is less than that of the AM receiver by the factor of FA on root 3 times FM, provided that root 3 times FM is greater than FA. This ratio is made even smaller in practice by the use of pre-emphasis, which we were talking about earlier where they emphasize the high end so they can de-emphasize it at the other end. Which uh, they I think they said because and they do it because that the um, the high pitched noise is the most annoying basically low pitched noise isn't so annoying as high pitched screeching and then we got selected references okay um, so there was general references and then there was generation of FM and detection of FM and interference and distortion aspects 
and transmitting equipment and receiving equipment and that's it and then we're on to our in index there's our index a couple of pages it's not exactly a huge index is it small enough we can look at it so uh, we've got aerial coupling circuits in receivers uh, receiving aerials transmitting aerials alignment procedure amplitude modulation armstrong's modulator uh, the indirect modulator and the serosoid modulator and armstrong's transmitter automatic frequency control in receivers and automatic frequency control in transmitters automatic gain control in receivers automatic phase control in transmitters the electronic mechanical method and the electronic method bbc slot type transmitting aerial beers receiver bessel plots bradley philco detector capture effect carrier zeros cathode input amplifiers cathode ray modulated Sorry, that's a cathode ray tube modulator, uh, Shelby. Uh, center frequency stabilization in transmitters. Circular loop aerials, cloverleaf loop aerials. Crosby type FM transmitters. Crosby type frequency divider. Crystal frequency discriminator. De-emphasis, uh, de-emphasis networks. Detectors, detectors or discriminators. Uh, Bradley type and the double tuned circuit type. Uh, Foster Steely detectors, locked oscillator detectors, uh, pulse type detectors, quadrature grid detectors, ratio Celian and Avens detectors, slope type detectors, super regenerative detectors, uh, combination AM FM detectors, derivation radio, <coughs> deviation, deviation ra ra ratio, um, uh, diode, dynamic limiters, dipole polar diagrams, direct FM transmitters. Uh, crystal frequency discriminators, uh, crystal f uh, uh, discriminators as detectors, uh, distortion in FM receivers, uh, dividers, frequency dividers, uh, dual channel modulators, dual channel transmitters, electronic reactants, feed systems, transmitting uh, transmitting aerial feed systems, uh, ferrite frequency modulators, Foster Steely detector. Um, free fre Fremadine receiver. I'll put some notes about that in the show notes. Uh, instantaneous frequency, relationship to phase, <coughs> frequencies relationship to phase, uh, uh, frequency steady state concept, uh, frequency changes in FM transmitters, uh, uh, frequency changes in VHS receivers, uh, frequency compression receivers. It's going to take a quick break. I'm back. I just went to get my. Uh, my coffee, all this talking. All this talking really dries, dries out your mouth. I don't do much talking, except for when I'm making videos, talking to you a lot. All right, so we talked about our VHF receivers, uh, frequency compression receivers, frequency dividers in receivers, frequency dividers in transmitters, frequency feedback, frequency follower, uh, frequency modulated quartz crystal, uh, m m uh, quartz crystal method and transmitter, uh, frequency modulation, analysis, carrier zeros, comparison with phase modulation, uh, the description of frequency modulation, the direct method of frequency modulation, um, frequency modulation due to quadrature side frequencies, indirect method of frequency modulation, narrowband frequency modulation, transmitter powers, uh, so it's frequency modulation transmitter powers and uh, wideband frequency modulation. Uh, gated beam, tube limiters and detectors, uh, improvement threshold, indirect method of FM generation, inductively coupled modulator, instantaneous frequency, interference, impulsive interference, intercarrier interference, modulated interference, random noise interference, single frequency interference. Intermediate frequency, IF, amplication and choice of value. Inverse frequency networks. Inverse impedances in FMQ. Klystrons, frequency modulation. Now, I think Klystrons, did he say that was the other bit of technology that was obsolete that, that he wanted to mention as, as a note? I forget. But let's look up Klystrons as well for the show notes. I'll put that in the show notes. Ah, limiter, discriminator. Ah, sorry, I bumped the table. 
uh, limiter, discriminator, bandwidth, uh, amplitude limiters, diode dynamic limiters, gated beam tube limiters, locked oscillator limiters, non-node limiters, super regenerative limiters, local oscillator circuit signal injection, locked oscillator detectors and limiters, magnetic frequency modulator, amplitude modulation, comparison of modulation methods, uh, constant band modulation, frequency modulation, introduction to modulation and phase modulation. Modulation index for FM and PM. Uh, monitoring equipment for transmitters. Uh, motor circuit for center frequency stabilization. Muting in FM receivers. Narrow band frequency modulation, NFM. Uh, noise diagrams of receivers. Noise interference due to random noise. Oh yeah, okay. interference due to random noise. Uh, noise performance of receivers and analysis of noise performance of receivers. Uh, Non-node limiter detector. Um, oscillators, frequency modulation, local oscillators, uh, locked detectors and limiters, uh, panoramic, panoramic monitor, phase discriminator, basic circuit, phase distortion in receivers, phase modulation, analysis of phase modulation, comparison with FM, and fa uh, description of phase modulation. Fa phase modulators, the Armstrong type, the cascade type, the cathode follower type, the cathode ray tube type, differential type, dual channel type, phasitron tube, reactance valve, serosoid type. So these are all phase modulators. Okay. Uh, phase and its relationship to frequency, phase shift oscillators, frequency modulation of phase shift oscillators, uh, phasitron tube. Oh, was it the phasitron tube? I forget. I'll look that up as well. Uh, Phasitron tube. All right. <clears throat> Polar diagrams of dipole, uh, polarization of VHF waves, power gains of transmitting aerials, pre distorted network or inver inverse frequency network, pre emphasis networks, propagation of VHF waves, pylon RCA transmitting aerial. RCA. Now, I think that RCA is like the Radio Corporation of America, but I'll check. I'll check. Um, quadrature networks, quadrature phase shift over a tuned transformer, quadrature grid detectors, quarter wave network using FMQ, quartz crystal equivalent circuit, uh, quench oscillator in super regeneration, ratio detectors. Let's, uh, let's make a note. Uh, super regeneration, super uh, regeneration, Erration. Um, I'll, I'll find out. There's lots of homework here, isn't there? That's one, two, three, four, five, six things to look up. Uh, ratio detectors, balanced circuits, unbalanced circuits, reactance valve, common grid form, connection to oscillator, frequency modulators, Injection of modulation, milliform, modulation of crystal oscillators, phase modulators, principle of reactance valve. Uh, receivers, frequency modulation, combination AMFM, communications type, frequency compression type, general, noise diagram, straight versus superhet. Superhet. Uh, look, they've used that, that word a couple of times. Superhet. Superhet. We'll put that in the homework as well. There's going to be lots of reading associated with this book teardown. All right, we've got regenerative frequency dividers, resistance valve modulator, uh, serosoid phase modulator, side frequency pairs, uh, signal generators, frequency modulators, silence circuits, silencer circuits, and receiver. Uh, slope FM detector, slot aerials, spectra, FM and PM, and pulse spectra. Uh, speech transmitters, frequency modulated. Uh, square loop aerials, square wave modulation, FM and PM, uh, stacking of transmitter aerials, straight reception of FM, super het reception of FM, super regenerative detectors and limiters, super regenerative reception, oh, reception of super regenerative, oh okay, super regenerative reception of frequency modulated signals, uh, super turnstile aerials, synchronized oscillated dividers, uh, time constants for pre-emphasis and de-emphasis, uh, towers, FM aerials on AM, uh, transfer characteristics of electrical networks, transmitter monitoring equipment, transmitting aerials, 
Travis double tune circuit discriminator, uh, triangular noise characteristics of FM receivers, tune transformer, quadrature phase shift by tune, tra tune transformer, uh, turnstile aerial, uh, vertical stacking of aerials, uh, and then we've got VHF amplifiers, VHF frequency changes, VHF front end circuits, and VHF ways. And then we've got polarization of VHF waves and propagation of vertical of VHF waves. And that, my friends, concludes the book. So it was only a little book, but it did take us a while to get back, and we've got a lot of homework to do, don't we? Wow. So uh, I'll just pop you over to the farewell cam and wrap you up. So uh, I was surprised this book was not what I thought it would be. I, I thought it would be a book mostly about mathematics. Um, and uh, not to say that it didn't do it, but it did very quickly get through just the basic fundamentals of frequency modulation. It was there in the front, but it was only, you know, the first couple of pages. And then the bulk of this book, to my surprise, was circuit diagrams, um, schematics, heaps of schematics in this book. Um, and they all had funny looking valve uh, things that I don't know the first thing about. So um, I might, uh, if, I, if I'm to get anything more out of this book, um, it, it will be just by closely reading the front matter that had to do with how FM works and that thing with the phaser and its sine wave and all of this sort of thing. Um, and I think that I, I, I owe myself that. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to look closely at, at the bulk of this book. And the other thing that I would like to take on is just some of the mathematics that it had in the appendix in the back. Um, uh, a quick squiz at that now, it seemed fairly approachable. It was just mostly tri trigonom trigonometry, wasn't it? It was, you know, sine this and cosine that and tan that. and uh, There wasn't any calculus. I didn't notice any calculus. Um, so uh, maybe, I'll have a, maybe I'll have a closer look at the mathematics uh, in this book. Um, Anyway, that's that's it. So um, up next is going to be the new book teardown, and it's going to be um, learning the art of electronics, uh, a hands-on lab course by Thomas C. Hayes. So um, that will be coming out in the next video, and then after that we'll back on to our sensor robot twenty. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the the video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.